Hi, it's Rick here from the CAD Jewelry School and in today's video we're going to be looking at using the Cathedral Shank tool and I'll show you just the way that you can add some custom profiles or create custom profile or cross sections to change uh, the look of your Cathedral Shank and I'll just show you what the issue is at the moment and uh, I'll show you how we can work around that. So if you come to the Rings tab and come to Cathedral Don't worry too much about ring size. I'm using Australian sizing here, but you can be using US or whatever your region is. I'm just going to change to one of the gallery items here, which is close to what I'm after. And it's this first option here. You'll notice it's with an open bridge, but we can come to the bridge section. And where it says open bridge, we can click the slider there just to close that. Now let me just explain the issue with the current version of Panther. So at the moment we can only select one type of cross-section profile. You do have control over the width and thickness at the base, uh, at the sides and also at the end. But at the moment we only can select a single cross-section profile. So in a situation where you might want let's say a knife edge at the end of the, uh, the shoulders of the band, we can't do that in the current tool and I'll show you just a workaround as I say just to get around that issue so let's just firstly place this we'll click the validate command to close out of that tool and what we'll first do is we want to grab the curve that we're going to use to place these profiles and we'll do that coming to the curves toolbar here and down here the option extract iso curve it's a rhino command so just click on that. Now it will prompt you for a surface to extract. Now just zoom in on the underside of the cathedral there. Just click anywhere there. And if you've got your end snap on in your object snaps or your int snap, intersection snap, you'll be fine. Just make sure you're clicking in the very end or intersection on the underside of the cathedral shank there. Just click there once and just press the enter key to close that and we'll do just one more so this time we'll select the underside of the bridge here so you can press enter to run the command again or just click here to run the command again it's prompting for the surface to extract so it's the underside under the bridge here just click there once to select that surface and again just come to the middle make sure you're in the center there and click there at intersection to, to create the curve there. Just press enter just to close out of that. So now we've got two curves, one which you can use later to create the bridge and one which we'll use to create the, the cathedral shank. So one quick way of creating the curves here that we need is under the tools option. If we select the ring band and the first icon in the second row is section from ring. This will create a cross section from the surface. So click there. And don't have to change anything here except under options. If you come down to options, the number of sections here, just type in four there. And just click out of that. And click on your grid and you'll see that you've got four cross sections. One in the center of the bridge uh, on the sides here and one at the very bottom. So just click the validate command to close out of that. And now we don't need the cathedral shank. We've got the information we need from that. So we can just select that and just press delete on our keyboard to delete that. You'll get an error message saying it broke history. That's fine. Just click the OK button, close out of that. And these are the curves that are gonna be used to construct our cathedral shank. We've just got to put a curve at the end, which is uh, going to be a, a sort of a knife edge. And we'll use the profile placer to do that. Just before we do that, just if you click on these curves, you'll see that they're grouped as part of the last command. So we'll just come to addition here and click the option to ungroup those curves. And now if we come to... oh 
we can actually select the outer cathedral shape here and come to tools and using the profile place it will be able to place a cross section at the ends there so you can see the profile placer places a default cross section but we can adjust its width and the profile height etc and we can also change the cross section or profile here so selecting the, from the list of cross sections here I'm going to pick uh, this one here 0 1 1 and you can see it's changed that now and we can adjust some measurements here I'll make this 1.7 let's make this a bit narrow 1.6 or something like that now we need one on the other side so this tool allows us to come into the mirror option here and mirror that cross section so we've got a duplicate of that on the other side obviously if we now come in and either change the profile or change uh, widths it will mirror that function and I'll just click the validate to close out of that so they're the curves we need and we'll use the sweep function to build the surface that we need so come to surfaces and sweep one rail is the command we want to run click there this is a rhino command so it's going to prompt you for a few options here so it's asking to select the rail so the rail is the path if you like that's the outer cathedral shank there and the cross sections we need to click these in order so I normally go clockwise so just click once on each of the cross sections there that make up that outer cathedral shape just press enter and enter one more time don't worry about these settings here I just will leave this to free form and uh, click the OK button just to close out of that sweep and you'll see now we've got uh, the basic shape built there now now we can do the same for the bridge so we'll click the sweep on rail command the path is the path of the bridge there and we're going to click curve one two and three oops make sure you select the right one and press enter and uh, look at that these curves are aligned in different directions see the arrows there the arrows need to be pointing in the same direction so the arrow for this and we need to flip it so if we come to flip here and just click on that arrow you'll see it change its direction so just make sure that they're aligned in the same direction that's fine now and we just press enter and again just click OK to close out of that tool so you might notice that the bridge if it's wider than uh, the top section of your ring one nice thing at the moment is because we have history automatically enabled when we do a sweep we can actually select that mid cross section profile and if I come in using the scale icon I can scale it and you'll see the profile will or the ring bridge will update with the changes I make again you can do the same for any of the cross sections in these two sweeps as they are at the moment now to finish off this we need to firstly just cap the bridge because each end of the bridge is actually open so to make it a solid we need to, to cap that so you can just simply type cap in the command line there and press enter it will tell you there's broken history that's fine because we're happy with the changes we're not going to edit this any further we'll click OK and with the ends you've got to decide whether you just want a flat cap or you might want a slightly rounded cap now again Panther gives you a tool to do a nice rounded cap here so if you come to tools and in the first row is smooth cap so just select one of those end profiles we have to do them one at a time or we can mirror them if you like we'll click smooth cap and there's our cap and we can specify a length if we want okay I'll just leave that at 0.6 or something like that and click OK 
and as I say we can mirror that or we can select uh, the opposite side and run the smooth cap tool now just uh, bear in mind that the, the cap works based on a seam that's on the curve so there's an option in this tool to allow you to go in the opposite direction for the cap I think I had mine set at 0.6 so I'll do minus 0.6 Otherwise the cap's going to be flipped onto the inside, which is obviously not what we want. And I'll click the validate button just to close that. So now I just have to join the two caps to the outer cathedral shape. So just holding shift, I can click on all three of those surfaces. And we can click Control J on our keyboard, and it's the shortcut to join. Or we can come to Edition and click the little puzzle icon, the jigsaw puzzle icon, to join those. Again, it will give you a warning saying it's broken history because change it from a surface to a solid, so um, we can't really edit this using the controls we used a moment ago. I'll click the OK button, and that's it. So let's just change to Panther's display mode, and you'll see that's our cathedral shank so we've got the same shaped cross section at the bottom and at the sides but we've got this sort of uh, knife edge sort of band at the top so that's the workaround for the moment uh, I believe the guys are working on uh, being able to select any cross section rare sections of the cathedral shank but uh, that will come in a a later edition of the software so that's the workaround for now and you can use that not just obviously for cathedral shanks but any of the other ring builders here uh, things like the shank tool you've got the same issue in fact with the shank tool you've only got control over the very bottom and the end uh, you've got no control over the middle so this might be a technique you can use if you need some control there as I say okay bye for now